All right, to start, we're gonna try and register a new account with the username Hamza and the password hello, all lowercase. As you can see, we get an error that doesn't allow this to happen because the password does not meet the requirements. I'm now going to use the password Hamza2004 dot with a capital H. This password meets the requirements and therefore the system now shows a complete message all right, now I'm going to open the database and show that the password wasn't stored in plain text, but instead it's been encrypted. Here's Hamza. And here's an encrypted password. And when you try and register the same username twice, you'll get an error saying that the username is taken. When you try and log in without a username and password entered, it'll come up with the error telling you that you need to enter one. All right, now I'm going to log in with the uh, username Hamza and the password Hamza2004. And as you can see, the login was successful and the program loads up. All right, so now I'm going to expand the RPN menu and click on what is RPN. As you can see, the header loads and the next button appears. I'm going to keep clicking the next button and let the information display. As you can see, the information is animating as it comes on the screen. Headings have a larger and bolder font compared to regular text. Images appear too. Once the bottom of the screen has been reached, the scroll bar becomes enabled. And as the text is being printed to the screen, the scroll bar remains at the bottom. Now that the end of this information has been reached, the next button disappears and the user is able to read the rest of the text. I'm going to close the program and show you all that information is stored. All the information that's printed to the screen is stored in text files, as shown here. And then all the images are stored in ResX files, as shown here. So once again, I'm going to log in using the username and password we created at the start. And I'm going to reopen the what is RPN learning section. This shows that it can be reopened. All right, now we're going to go to the testing section for reverse Polish notation. As we can see, a question has been dynamically created for us. We're going to answer this question correctly. When we do get the question right, uh, a GIF plays for us, showing us that we got the question correct. The progress bar increases, and the consecutive questions correct counter increases. When I answer a question wrong, it shows the correct GIF, and also resets the correct questions counter, and the progress bar. Now I'm just going to keep answering questions correctly, to show what happens once you've met the requirements for consecutive questions correct. Once I've answered all five questions correctly, my difficulty level increases by one. I'm going to close and reopen the program to show that the progress is saved. And the difficulty is still the same. And now in the new difficulty, I'm going to get a question correct and a question wrong. And clearly, you remain in the same difficulty level. Now I'm going to keep answering the questions until I've got everything correct in this topic. Now that I've completed the topic and reached the max difficulty level, I'm shown a message prompting me to this, and also the progress information is hidden. Alright, now I'm just going to go into the other two sections and answer questions just to show you that I can. I'm going to head to the previous answered question section now. As you can see, it has all the previous questions I've answered. I can select up here to choose the topic I want to look at. Now I'm going to close the program and look at the database where all this information is stored. And as you can see, questions are being stored with the answers and the I go back there and clearly it's right there. Now I'm going to register a new user 
we're going to register a new user called Ellis. The password is Ellis two thousand and three dot. Register him. We're going to log in as Ellis and Ellis two thousand and three dot and log in. And when we go into test history, you see it's empty. And then we go to test. There's no questions been answered, as this new user has zero progress. Nice going, Ellis. Now I'm going to log back into my own account. Again, I'm going to go to the binary testing section, and clearly it still has progress saved from before. I'm going to head over to the video section to show you that the video does work. This is the fourth in a series of videos about binary. I'm going to talk about how we can represent real numbers. You okay. Here in the binary tree section, I can generate trees with their post in and pre-order traversals printed to the screen. Pretty sick. Now we're going to go to 17, which is stacks, push a few items. Then we're going to pop a few items. And then we're going to keep pushing until there's an overflow. Clearly the stack is full. Now we're going to peek and it will show that 5 was the last entry. Then we're going to keep popping until there's an underflow error. That's the end of it.